welcome to the session. Today we're going to look at Daft Punk's D-Rest for the Tron Legacy soundtrack and how do we create that in Logic Pro X. Daft Punk's knowledge of synths and beats were used extremely well to create the moods for the Tron Legacy soundtrack. So let's have a look. So this is the project for d -Rest, and I did one section of the track just to give a taste of how the song sounds like and here it is. So that's the partial track for D-Rest and um, let's get straight to it. Track is a 120 which is really really typical for a dance track and um, it's at yeah 4-4. Four, four. And okay let's start with the beats. Um, for the hats, it's got this sparky sparky type sound, the original one, so I couldn't find something that's super close to it but I found something that gave the same vibe to it and that is under um, tambourine, um, let's zoom in, tambourine tap topper. So if you go under here, you'll find a tambourine tap topper, which is over here that you can see. And I thought it captured the vibe pretty well. So I just dragged that in straight into the timeline. And um, the thing that I added on is a uh, Enveloper and just to give it more attack and to adjust the decay a little bit. Here's how it sounds with it And without With So you can hear with it. Uh, it's got a bit of that sort of like um, Percussive type compressed type sound where you get a little click at the start And I think that captures the vibe uh, of the original track much closer. Now, let's go to the kick first. And the kick is something that um, you can find in electronic drum kits and the drums and percussion TR909 kit. And that's the kick that I use, which sounds like this. Really straightforward. And the interesting thing is now we can go to the snare. And we have a drum machine. And I just put a snare and under the snare is a seismic snare. You can select it under snares once you click on this. And the interesting thing is a seismic snare already is sort of that has the kind of white noise kind of feel. Uh, here it sounds. So it's got that clappy white noise kind of feel. But I wanted even more noise. So how did I go about that? I did something that might interest you. It's actually I used a test oscillator and I set it to white noise, right? So this thing is actually a white noise generator and it's under, um, you can find it under utility, test oscillator, stereo. So and I selected white noise, you can select different generators. So if I take out the noise gate, this is what you hear. So it's just on all the time. But I turn on a noise gate, which is closed most of the time. And I set the side chain. Now side chain is sort of controlling a track from another track to bus, uh, bus 8. Bus 8, here we go. 
and I sent this snare out into bus 8. Bus 8. So instead of stereo out, which is the normal one, I sent it to bus 8. And what happens is then this signal here, if you look at bus 8, you'll see that the meters are jumping because we're sending it out in the bus 8, right? But we're also side-chaining the noise um, here, this noise gate here, it's under a percussion gate and I set it, the release and the attack like this. And um, you can see that every time this snare plays, it'll open up the gate and you'll hear the white noise come through. So if we solo this as well, you hear this. And you'll see the open and close over here. Just see that. It's closed right now. Open, open. So that gives more of a white noise snare kind of feeling, which uh, when you hear them together, sounds like that. Sorry, that's muted. So is this with the white noise? This without. So with the white noise, it's much more has that high-end noise sound about it. Which I think captures the original vibe pretty well as well. Now on to the synths. Synths are pretty straightforward. Um, I use a lot of ES2. And in this case, I use a tutorial setting. I use an analog saw in it, which is sort of initialization for analog saw. So it's pretty much just a basic analog saw. And from there, I added an overdrive, and in this case it's hard and loud. You want it to be a bit, you know, really harsh, and it's a bit of phaser as well. And I use a 10 stage phaser. So in this case, it's sort of like giving it a bit of a, let's listen to this. So you can see because of the phaser, it sort of evolves a bit the sound. You want it to have a bit of that organic feeling. And then the, you can see there are tons of layers of the same synth. I mean, uh, the same notes, but different synths. So I'm going to open up Automation, and you can see that they come in at different places. Like there's this synth here, it slowly comes in. This one comes in at the start and combines with this too. So it's, um, I'm not a big synth head. So I use a lot of multiple synths to sort of combine into one singular sound. And in this case, I use another ES2, and this time, it was just a basic user default, which sounds pretty straightforward. If I take out the amp, it's going to sound like this. So I wanted a bit of grit, so I added a guitar amp, and I used the distorted Frankenweed drive. And when you put that on, it becomes much more ballsy if you hear it now. which is pretty cool. And um, I sent most all of this to a reverb as well. And a reverb is um, not your usual film score reverb. I use a large space spring reverb, modern spring. So it's a bit of that spring type, not so spacious type sound. Uh, you can hear that it's a spring. And yeah, so if you hear these two together, it sounds like this. <laughs> So much more dimension to the sound. And now there's even one more dimension to the sound. And I use a um, tutorial setting, analog saw tree oscillator. That's the setting I use, and I use an amp as, on this as well. Sunshine combo distort, under distorted. One of my favorites. Um, and this one doesn't come in so early. It sort of comes in from zero until high, because this one sort of on the high range, and let's hear how it sounds. So it gets bigger and bigger, and this one is an octave above, and if you put them together, you hear this. And 
And from this point, you start hearing the bottom track a bit more, the octave. Which is pretty cool. You want it to sort of evolve. With these lines that repeat, you, you want it to sort of evolve as it goes along. So that's how I did it for this particular track. And uh, there's a bass that goes on. This is a pretty straight up bass. It's also an ES2 under synth leads, funk pulse lead. And then I spread it a little bit with stereo spreader, just a basic default one. And I don't think I did an EQ on it. Yep, EQ is not doing anything. So this one as well is, um, has a little sort of lift as it goes along. And it just sounds like this. And keeps growing and growing and growing. And the other bass is the darker, deeper bass. It's under Alchemy. I use the uh, Analog Dark Bass. That's what you can find under Bass. And you'll find Analog Dark Bass. It's under Sub. And uh, it's also has a little rise going on here, and here's how it sounds. Just a really dark bass, and uh, just to give it that fatness underneath. Yep, and that's it. And when you reach this section here, it's just bringing in the same tambourines, the same snares, and the same kicks. Um, and yeah, and everything sort of just goes on. But uh, the bass plays differently, it goes like that. So it's kind of these two going. And I added another loop, which is a filter groove uh, topper. Which you can find all these toppers, if you see the name topper, is meant to be on top of a beat. So a lot of hats, a lot of snare type sounds. And I just wanted to up the groove a little bit more, so I tossed it on top of the tambourine, and you get this kind of thing. And the whole beat sort of gets a bit bigger, right, with everything. And yeah, just with everything. And it's just like dropping out the beats, bringing them back in, and this part sort of repeating stuff. It's just repeating notes. Um, I think originally they just cut it up and use some sort of like a thing to give it some jitter, but this one is just played MIDI. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, and that's it. That's how you construct something like that. It's just the bass line, the synths, and the beats. I hope you learned something useful today, like how to stack different layers of synths to create one singular synth sound that evolves over time. If you like the project, you can download it at the link below. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more. See ya.